It's game day. Good afternoon. Welcome to the podcast. Lots of news going on. I want to discuss the latest on Tim English's situation. He'll stay at the Dogs. I'll get to that later in the podcast. Also, I want to discuss a contract and free agency sort of dilemma or conundrum the Pies are currently grappling with. I'll take you through that. Also, I wanted to uh, talk about all the big team news overnight, and in particular, the latest from training this morning. We've got cameras out in about seven news, and of course, Teams flying out as well today, including Geelong, a big news podcast. But first off, I'll discuss some big contract news, a news story that's come across my phone overnight. I believe that James Sicily will recommit to Hawthorne now for five years, the highly regarded free agent. That's certainly the view of at least two clubs that have been uh, formally or informally sounding him out. His manager didn't comment when I spoke to him or reached out to him, I should say, this morning. Hawks sources certainly now hope this is the case. Obviously, they're not in a position to confirm it, but uh, it does take one of the biggest free agents off the market. I understand that Sicily, who's been a fill-in captain lately um, and is, of course, ranked one of the best 10 defenders currently in the game from a stats perspective with champion data and, indeed, the coaches' votes, uh, he will stay in a five-year deal at Hawthorne, is my understanding today. So good news for the Hawks. I expect that will be announced uh, reasonably soon, but that's certainly the view according to a couple of clubs I speak to that I think have uh, been sounding him out. So James Sicily set to stay almost certainly now at the Hawks. Some big team news overnight. I'll get to that, but just briefly from Collingwood training this morning, some good news for the Pies ahead of this huge clash. MCG Saturday afternoon against Richmond with Dustin Martin back, but Taylor Adams, Braden Maynard and Nick Dacos have all trained this morning. Collingwood were quietly confident they would be right yesterday, but they didn't train yesterday off the back of uh, some flu symptoms, but they're all training this morning, and it looks like, at this stage, set to go for an old-fashioned Saturday afternoon, bit of biffo, bit of clout against Richmond at the MCG. That is magnificent. Obviously, I'm just excited talking about it, to be honest with you, so I'll wipe the smile off my face and keep going with the news, but uh, I can't wait for that game tomorrow afternoon, and I'm sure a lot of footy fans share the same view. Some big team news overnight for the Cats. Patrick Dangerfield's back. Joel Selwood out with a corky. Um, Mitch Cleary is trying to catch up with him today, so we might have him on 7 News tonight. But Joel Selwood is out with a corky. The Bulldogs have rested Marcus Bont and Pally. Now, the context, of course, I think it reflects what we spoke about on the podcast on Monday. He had that heavily iced foot after their win over the Bombers last week. That's been a persistent problem. It's his sort of foot slash ankle, based on where the ice was. I, I looked at it in the rooms, and I imagine they're managing that. Richmond, I mentioned it. Dustin Martin back, named it full four. That's hugely exciting. For the Swans, Paddy McCartan will play after his recent ninth concussion, which is great from Paddy's perspective. I love watching Paddy play. He's got infectious enthusiasm, loves playing footy, just wants to be out there. And frankly, he's been really important for the Swans. I think they missed him defensively last week. Obviously, the counter view and all that is his concussions. And Peter Jess has been on record, the concussion campaigner, this week, including on our news and this podcast, is saying that he doesn't think McCartan should play again. Now, that's a long-term concern. Um, Peter's coming at that from his personal perspective, and I guess he's he's um, I guess so, so it's almost a warning, if you like, from Peter, given all his concussion research. But there's no doubt that Paddy wants to be out there, and it will be exciting for footy fans to see that this weekend. And I'm sure the doctors have gone through all the appropriate protocols and checks, certainly from a health perspective. The Swans do a great job in that area, as do all the clubs. For Port Adelaide, this is an interesting one. Mitch Georgiades has been named to play. That is the fourth time this year, I think up to the fourth time, Port have used the medical sub, activated it, activated it, and the player has played the next week. Now, it certainly raised eyebrows at St Kilda, and it's easy to, to dismiss this, but Port did win last week by a point, and in theory, it might have helped them win the game. The issue here, just to be clear, is that Port aren't breaching any rules. They're following the AFL's medical sub rules, which allow for a bit of a grey area, and they're applying that. And also, the AFL, in conjunction with Port, approve that player... Um, playing the following week. The doctor from Port gets in touch with the doctor from the AFL, submits an updated medical report, and that's effectively ticked off by the AFL. So Port, again, very professionally run, haven't done anything wrong. But uh, the point is that not all clubs are applying that medical sub rule, is my understanding, the same. Some are reading the rule different to others. And there's certainly calls from a number of clubs that I speak to for the AFL, and Brad Scott in particular, um, to clarify this situation and his expectation of whether a player should miss 12 days and whether the AFL at the moment is doing enough scrutiny on whether the player should miss the 12 days. The issue, of course, is that the AFL doctor 
under medical practices isn't really in a position to question the other club's doctor. In this case, is Port Adelaide's. If Port submit that the player was injured to their reasonable satisfaction and has come good on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then I guess you've just got to take them at their word. So there's some issues, I think, around the, right, the way the rule is drafted. No one's doing anything wrong at the moment, but some clubs are applying it different to others. And I think the view is, the strong view is that there needs to be clarification so everyone is on the same page. I know I get feedback, hopefully, from a lot of Blues fans that uh, listen to this uh, podcast. I know Stephen Kernahan and Craig Bradley are immensely popular amongst the Blues faithful. They're Blues greats and, indeed, Blues legends. Mick Warner with an interesting front-page story in the Herald Sun today regarding a couple of guarantees that those guys provided and some outstanding court action in regards to those guarantees. Look, that's the subject of court action. It's a very interesting story. My read on that, um, at least according to the article and from some people I speak to, and again, it's Mick Warner's story, and I encourage you to refer to the article, and I don't have any prejudgment on the outcome from a court perspective, is that they had a printing business, they uh, had a contract, they needed some some type of bridging finance or new money, they sought a loan uh, in regards to that uh, new money. I think one of the contracts or one of the deals fell through. They couldn't at one point service that loan. Now, now there's a court case in regards to the repayment of that loan. One of the issues is that it's at an exorbitant or what could be a high interest rate. And uh, another issue is apparently, according to the article, that Kernahan and Bradley have provided personal guarantees in regards to that outstanding loan. So they're effectively on the hook for that money. And there's an issue at court now as to whether that's payable on the terms to which they agreed in the loan documents. Just from my legal history, I know that uh, in some instances when you provide a personal guarantee for loans, you've got to sign off that you've got independent legal advice in regards to that. So that'll be one of the issues, no doubt, in that case. But Kernahan and Bradley involved in some Supreme Court action at the moment in regards to those loans, and they're uh, due to repay a significant amount of money. And uh, the certain, certainly the inference in Mick Warner's story is that their homes uh, are at stake in all that as well. So that's an interesting story in the Herald Sun today, but that's a bit of an update from my understanding of it this afternoon. Big story for the Bulldogs on 7 News last night. Tim English will stay at the Bulldogs, the highly talented and highly sought after Ruckman. I said it's a coup on the news. It is because West Coast and Fremantle would have come exceptionally hard for English to return to Western Australia. The development yesterday was that Sam Power, the Bulldogs' highly regarded and highly rated list boss, met with Colin Young and Andrew McDougall, English's management, who were over here from WA. Those talks were very successful, very productive, and it's my firm understanding that a deal will be finalised in the next couple of weeks. It's not concrete, the final deal yet, but will be finalised in the next couple of weeks for English to stay at the Dogs. That could be announced in the next couple of weeks or as soon as, as next week, so keep a very close eye on that one. But that's a, a great boost for the Dogs. Team English will stay, um, at least for the moment, at the Bulldogs, rejecting those lucrative uh, offers that either have or would have come from West Coast and Fremantle. I'll leave you with one. It's the discussion in football that currently no one wants to have. It's an awkward discussion, and it involves Tasmania and this notion of a 19th licence. I spoke to one prominent um, president overnight, and it was their view that the game can't afford a 19th licence or a 19th team financially or talent-wise. Where does that leave Tasmania? Well, in theory, um, reading between the lines, at least according to this one club president, I guess you'd either have to have Hawthorne or North do some type of deal down there to continue playing and become in part or fully the Tasmanian team. Now, clearly that wouldn't happen to Hawthorne, just to emphasise that 110%. They're not going to become a whole Tasmanian team. Um, Or you'd have to relocate a club down there or you don't proceed with the Tasmanian model. My takeout on this at the moment is that Gil McLaughlin has a lot to do in the next two and a half months. Arguably, now I'm not doubting Gil or the AFL, he might have bitten off more than he can chew. I touched on this on uh, yesterday's podcast. You know, my view is the AFL will need certainty on the television deal, certainty on the collective bargaining agreement, and certainty on the funding deal with clubs before the clubs sign off on Tasmania. It's an awful lot, in theory, to get done now in two and a half months, and I don't think the clubs will sign off a blank check for Tasmania. Now, clearly the Tasmanian government might provide a guarantee of sorts, and that's obviously what the Tasmanian working group is uh, working on and trying to secure behind the scenes. But point is, there's resistance from some of the prominent club presidents for a 19th licence financially or talent-wise, and it brings up the discussion about what a Tasmanian team would look like and whether that's an existing team. Now, I can't see us having a discussion in two and a half months about an existing team going down to Tasmania. So, look, I think it's a very, very... It's becoming an even more complex issue behind the scenes. 
Separately, North and Hawthorne's deal with Tasmania expires at the end of this year. They get revenue from that deal, and they'll want some certainty on the Tasmanian situation as well. But it's a discussion at the moment that nobody in footy wants to have, but I can tell you and report that at least one of the prominent club president's views um, is that the game can't afford a 19th licence financially or talent-wise. So the discussion's got to be around having 18 licences. So if Tasmania, well, maybe they, if they want a team and deserve a team, then the discussion changes a bit in terms of who should go down there. An interesting discussion point that I'll leave you with on the eve of the weekend. In the meantime, I'm excited about the football and particularly excited about Dusty's return this weekend. Some big news off the top concerning James Sicily. Good news for the Bulldogs. Collingwood contact can contract conundrum. I'll try that again. Have a great weekend and please join us again on Monday for my podcast. Don't forget also to tune into Triple M over the weekend because Triple M rocks football. That was Tom Brown's news. Come back every Monday, Thursday and Friday for more and subscribe to Triple M Footy on Listener or wherever you listen to get all our podcasts throughout the season. For Ream Hot Water and McDonald's, Triple M rocks footy.